crew. Welcome back to another Spray Castle tutorial. Today I want to talk to you guys about, well actually it's not really a tutorial, it's more of um, answering questions or questions and answers. And these are basically the same questions that I've been getting for the past few years. Today I literally woke up to 15 people asking me the same question. They're not the only ones, so let's tackle them real quick. All right, the first question is, what is your setup when you spray paint life? Guys, my setup doesn't change much from the tutorials that we make. Basically, it's a table. I have my eight colors of spray cans. Uh, nine if you include the clear coat, I think. And you have a table and a table. So it's two tables. Guys, at my disposal, I have over 140-something tables. You don't need 130. You just two, if that. Take some chairs. Um, I usually paint standing up, but I do get tired. So on occasions, I will set a chair and sit down. All right. Uh, how many people do you take with you? Myself and somebody else. You want to take a person that knows your techniques, a person that knows your lifestyle as an artist. Every, every, everything from how you began to what kind of techniques you, uh, you can do in the 5-10 minute span that you have for a painting. Um, I know that sometimes on my videos I deviate from speed. Guys, that's only because I take the time to explain things and I have to use a little more clear coat than usually. But outside spray painting, five, ten minutes is a little too long, but uh, from yeah, about five minutes or so, it's, it's probably about how much you want to spend on the painting. Um, I also take a canopy because more than likely we're going to be outside. So take a canopy. So imagine me right here, canopy around me, table here, and a table on this side. Uh, you're going to take a person with you. Now, I've had this question too. How do you pay that person? If it's a buddy, well, you guys work it out. That's entirely up to you guys. Um, the way I do it, and a lot of artists don't like this, the way I do it is I take a buddy with me. Uh, he attracts people. He makes the sales. He talks to people, makes them laugh, whatever. I split it down the middle. That's just me. I mean, it's a symbiotic relationship. I need him as much as he needs me, right? So uh, that's just how I do it. You don't have to do it that way. You can work other ways. How much should I charge per a painting? How good are you? No. Uh, that depends on what area you're at, guys. I have trained a lot of spray painters from Vegas that charge $50 to $75 a painting. Guys, it's the area where you live. That's Vegas. You can go to Dubai and sell them for $300 a painting. It's Dubai. In Carlsbad, New Mexico, where I'm at, guys, Oh man, I, I would be a joke if I sat there and tried to sell them for $375 a painting. Especially when they just said that it took five minutes to create. So with that being said, it depends on the area that you're at. Guys, when I spray paint live, I charge $10 for five minutes. Sounds kind of like, <laughs> like another profession. But no, I seriously, I think it's a good deal. Five minutes of my time for $10? Yeah, yeah. You got a bigger ego, you can charge more, I suppose. But ultimately, I'll sell what, two, three paintings right off the bat. So to me, it just evens out. It's definitely up to you guys. Ask your friends, ask your family how good you are. Don't ask me. Um, your family can be a little more brutal than your friends. Uh, I can tell you that from experience. So... How do I get my paintings in a gallery? Well, each gallery has different standards. Uh, I was recently kicked out of a gallery for being a professional painter. They don't accept professionals. Uh, there's other ones that only accept professionals. It, you just have to go down to a gallery and talk to them. Now, there's different, there's different, um, well, there's different things that they take under consideration when, when you're applying to become a member of their gallery. For example, there's a gallery in Albuquerque that used to charge me $500 a year. There's a gallery up north a little bit more that was $500 a month. So why do my paintings sell for so much in galleries? Well, okay. You have to take under consideration the membership fee, so you have to cancel that 
and then they have a hanging fee. So however many paintings you have, they'll charge you per painting, let's say $100 a painting. So now if you have three paintings, you just paid your, your monthly membership, that's $800. Then you have to have each painting professionally framed. Now a professional framer will charge you anywhere from $800 to $1,200 right off the bat on just that one painting. So you have to take in consideration the payment to pay the, well, I usually pay them up front, but uh, everybody usually pays them up front. But you have to take in consideration, you have to make your money back on those $1,200 that you just spent. Uh, and then once you sell the painting, you have to give a percentage in most galleries to the gallery. Uh, some are 10%, others are 5 some have been 20%. It just depends what gallery, the prestige of the gallery. So you have to work that into your consideration all said and done. At the end, you have to sell your painting for $3,500 to make, I don't know, close to $400, $500 profit. So keep that in mind, too. That's, that's something that a lot of people don't take under consideration. Um, what else? Oh, what kind of paintings can I do? Anything. That's pretty hassle. Anything. Uh, from abstract to animals to people to portraits. Anything. Anything. I can sculpt. I can do anything. Can you guys get there? Definitely. Keep practicing. Keep practicing. I have all my... Oh, I, every painting that I do, I have all my my techniques on YouTube. And uh, best of all, they're free. Now, if I charge for videos out there, like there's a DVD that I just made with a with a colleague of mine, Brandon, uh, from Space Paintings. Well, we charge on that one. It was a collaboration, guys. Uh, but on the rest of the videos that I have, you can find all those techniques pretty much basically for free. So uh, you can do anything, anything with spray paints. It's just not limited to space paintings. Not anymore. Uh, oh, that's another question that I still get quite a bit. My spray castle tools. Let's talk about my spray castle tools. I am an artist, and I have always been an artist, and I've always painted with different medias, right? Watercolors, acrylics, pastels, India ink. You name it, I've done it. And unlike some of the other spray painters that just started doing spray painting, well, they're just getting used to the media and, and creating the basic spray paintings that you can do, right? Which is mostly planets. I wanted to create more than just planets. Now, guys, I was lucky enough that I learned from one of the four original creators of the spray paint art. And because of that, I got a lot of insight into the art and how it got started. Uh, which, let me clarify some. Sadat, eh, I've never heard of him. And so I'll just say that for now. It's another subject we'll tackle some other time. But uh, so anyways, they used to use razor blades to manipulate the paint and be able to create... Uh, texture on planets, ring around Saturn, uh, little white castles, scratch the paint to create tile effects. And yes, there was a lot of accidents. People used to get cut a lot. So, guys, I went to engineering school, and not that that has a lot to do with it, but it helped me in how to create an ergonomic tool. Very easy to make, guys. Popsicle stick with a, with a point cut out at a 45-degree angle. So... When you paint, it's a lot easier to control the paint than to do this. Very easy. Yes, I used to have them professionally made. Uh, plastic injection. I no longer sell them. Guys, you can create your own. You Believe me, I still make my own. So make your own. Uh, the Spray Castle Funnel, which will help you manipulate the paint and create thinner lines, trees, finer details that you otherwise can't do. And the straight edge. No, they didn't invent the straight edge. I created a lot of techniques with it, but the straight edge will help you uh, manipulate the paint, create sun rays, bursts, light, all sorts of cool little nifty things. Uh, water reflections. All right. So I hope that tackles a lot of the questions that I've had. And if you can come up with more, please do so. All right, guys. Well, I have a painting that I was commissioned to do that I have to continue. So with all that said... Thank you guys for watching these tutorials. Um, I wait. I do have a question. Do you guys like these tutorials better uh, with the with the phone? Because we can make more. Definitely make more of those. It's a trade. It's a trade because if I record them with the camera and I do voiceovers, guys, with voiceovers, I feel like I lose a lot of the things that I want to say at the time.
because you guys don't know this, but when I do a voiceover, I watch the video over 10 times because I cut, paste, zoom in, cut, zoom out, cut. It takes a long time. And then I have to take the sound out of all of that and then sit there with the microphone and do a voiceover. And so, okay, now here we're going to be doing this and we're going to be doing that. It takes a very long time for me to produce those videos. That's why I'm saying if you guys like these better, well, we can make some more of these. Or if you guys want a combination of both, we can definitely do that. But it's all up to you. You guys are the audience. You guys, let me know what you think. Um, all right. Well, I can't think of anything else. So with that being said, if you guys want to see any other tutorials or have any other questions, please post your comments below and I'll tackle them. All right, crew. We'll keep those cans shaking. I'll see you guys soon.